I'm down on the awesome Gigantica Lakes in France and um, I'm on the main lake at the minute and I've got to say it's a cracking looking place. It's the first time I've ever been down here and from the moment I come through the gate and uh, had a bit of a look around I just knew it was my sort of water. I'm guessing it's about 30 something acres, I don't know. Um, but it seems to offer a little bit for everybody. There's this close in work under the trees and you can see fish just sort of basking in the sun right under the branches. Um, and then on the first evening there's quite a few fish crashing out in the central part of the lake so you know I knew it was you know a bit of variation you know you could, you could sneak a few out the edge and you can also blast into the middle uh, and do a bit of long range work and you know everything in between. Um, now I'm down here with my brother uh, you know we, we, we took a long drive and got down here ready for the draw. And the draw went all right actually I came out third in the draw uh, my brother came out um, second to last uh, but we still managed to secure our first choice swims really, you know. Um, being as I was third I managed to get the one that we both sort of wanted, a uh, swim called the Alimo, which is a double swim and we sort of worked on the premise that um, if one of us ended up with a really bad draw or a swim that didn't fancy then we could uh, we could double up in here. But as it turned out, so, uh, my brother managed to get in a swim next door called the Stink which you know was, was the two swims that we wanted to, to, to fish in the first place. Um, first 24 hours on the lake sort of had mixed fortunes uh, for me and my brother. Um, basically Rich did really well, I did do so well. <laughs> um, in fact I say he did well, he had an absolutely phenomenal result. Um, it all started off with the um, uh, with the 38 at some point in the early hours, I'm, I'm guessing it was 2-3 o'clock in the morning. And then at dawn he got another bite, uh, he quickly rang me while he was playing the fish, it weeded him up. So I ran around there and it was solid and weed. So I gave the bailiff a quick ring, uh, he came around in his boat, took him out in the boat and um, freed the fish from the weed. And it turned out to be an absolutely awesome fish called the Survivor, weighing at uh, 46 pounds, you know, which is its summer weight, I think it's done uh, a little bit bigger, I think it's done 50 up, sort of back end of the year, but an absolutely cracking, long lean, scaly fish, really, really nice fish and uh, as you can imagine he was over the moon with that one. Um, but the action just didn't stop there. He, he then caught a 42 common, uh, called the Virgin common. Um, and then caught another 30 and 20, and ended up having eight runs, eight bites, and landing five fish. You know, he had a couple of problems with hook pulls, and um, he got cut off. But to get eight bites in the first 24 hours on a lake, and especially at a lake that can be quite tricky, is a phenomenal result. He did really, really well. Um, Whereas I sat in this swim, catching absolutely nothing. I just, I just couldn't get a bite. You know, half my brother's um, bites were, were about 50, 60 yards out, and half of them were at long range. And his, his long range rods weren't a million miles away from where I was fishing. It was about 20, maybe 30 yards difference between the two rods. And we, we had fish over us, but for whatever reason, I just couldn't get a bite at all. You know, wound the rigs in um, that evening, I ready to go around for tea. Nothing wrong with them at all. You know, they were just in a little bit of light weed, and yeah, you know, everything was fine. So, God knows what happened there. Really don't know. It was it maybe just you know he had a lot of fish in his swim that were feeding, and uh, they wouldn't cross the other side of the the weed bed that separated us to, uh, you know, to, to, to drop onto my spots. But whatever it was, I don't know. But he he ended up with a fantastic start. Um, the following evening, the the lake was just alive. It was just absolutely electric. There was there was fish just crashing everywhere. Um, at dusk, um, and it's, it's just a phenomenal feeling just sitting here and watching. You know, those, those fish could be of any size. You know, there's a good number of 50s, 60s, 70s, and even bigger. And you know, just to sit there behind the rods and just watching them show and show and show, and not a million miles from the baited area, it was just fantastic. And I just knew something was going to happen. Even though I'd not caught for the previous 24 hours, I was just confident that a bite was on the cards. And that happened just after midnight. Um, it was a cracking looking fish. Turns out it was a fish called the Horseshoe uh, Mirror, which I think basically refers to the fact that it looks like a horseshoe fish out to Horseshoe Lakes down in Gloucestershire. Real cracking, long lean, scaly fish. Um, that weighed in at 33 pounds. Really good result. And then I had another bite at dawn. Uh, that turned out to be a 17 pound common. And then at 8 o'clock in the morning, I got another bite. Oh, look at this for a stunner. 33 pounds. This would look right at home on somewhere like Stoneacres or one of the Oxfordshire pits, but it's not. It's in the middle of France in Gigantica. Cracking fish. My first time here at Gigantica, and this is the third one. And uh, I 
Couldn't be more pleased with the looks of these. Absolutely cracking. But then my brother again got in on the action, this time with a 41 pound mirror. And what a stunning fish it was too. It was, it was a fish called the Patch Fully, which as you can guess is, is a fully scaled mirror, uh, or nearly fully scaled mirror. Absolutely cracking fish. Just, just, oh, it just blew me away, you know, how you could come to France and catch scalies like that. It's, you know, it's, it's not what I picture as, you know, the sort of fish that you catch in France, you know. I think of sort of big, fat, round chunks, really, but this lake is just full of scalers, and that's, you know, that's, that's one of the best I've seen from here. Well, that was the end of the action for that day. Um, the following day, got the rods back out again, and uh, things kicked off again in, in the morning. I uh, started off with a 22 pounder, again, a nice scaly fish, and uh, then had another one. Well, here we are on the third morning with another gigantic scaly. These have all been cracking fish, and I've had three mirrors now when they're coming, and all the mirrors have been lovely scaly carp. Not normally what you find in France, and uh, that's what gigantic is famous for. Um, cracking looking fish, probably not the biggest in the lake at 29 pounds, but uh, please all the same. After that, I started to see that a pattern was emerging. That you know the, the, the fish were either biting some point after midnight in the early hours of the morning up to about eight o'clock. And after then it was dying a death a little bit. I know my brother had had a uh, bite up to one o'clock, but the weather was a little different and it was, it was overcast most of the day. But now that now the sun was coming out, bite time was pretty much up to eight, nine o'clock. And uh, the following day was no exception really. Uh, ended up with two more fish at um, 17 and uh, 21. Again, not the biggest fish in the lake, but some cracking scalers. And by that Wednesday morning, I was absolutely exhausted. You know, we, we weren't getting a great deal of sleep. Because the fish were showing as much as they were, we, we really weren't getting to bed till two o'clock in the morning. You know, we're just watching the fish, expecting to bite at any minute. Um, and then, you know, inevitably, when you did get to bed, somebody would get a bite in the early hours of the morning or first thing at dawn. Um, and usually, you know, up until that point, I was getting about two fish uh, per morning. So, lack of sleep was uh, was paying its toll. Plus, as well, I was fishing at quite long range. Um, about 130 something yards, um, which is not the longest I've fished, but you can't use braid on this water and there's a line thickness limit, so you, you, you've got to use 12 pound line or above. Um, and casting into a 15 mile an hour headwind with um, a minimum of 12 pound line, is, uh, <laughs> it does creep distance down a hell of a lot. But I was, I've managed to get them out there, it's taken me a few casts, and uh, I must admit it's uh, killing me a little bit, you know, my arms are aching and everything. You know, I've not done distance casting for a couple of years, so it's a, it's a bit of baptism. Fire, but I was managed to get the rods out there each night and uh, get in positions where I was happy. And um, I, was, I was getting a few fish from the from the 130 yard range, but I was also getting a few from um, 116 yards, I think it was. It's a nice clear spot out there, uh, so I was catching from both those two spots. And um, like I say, by the by the end of Wednesday, I was absolutely exhausted. But that's when things changed a little bit. You know, the weather changed. Uh, what was getting previously is probably mid 20 degrees, uh, 24, 26 degrees, a little bit of sun, a little bit of overcast, and then it just changed just to bright sunshine and 30 odd degrees. I mean, yesterday was uh, 36 degrees, today is something similar as well, and it's just really warm. It's just today there's a bit of a wind on, so it's not you know, feeling as much. And as a result, uh, my results have sort of tailed off a little bit, as has everybody else's on the lake. Um, although I did manage to pinch one this morning. Well, this is my last full day on Gigantica, and it's fish number eight. Uh, the weather's been a bit funny recently, it's, uh, it's just got really, really warm. Put the fish off big time, so I've uh, stuck a rod down the edge, and uh, this is the result. Again, a cracking looking scaly, real deep colours on it, and a fantastic fish weighing at 26 pounds. Well, it's pack up time now, but I did see something very interesting yesterday, just before, uh, just before dinner time. Took a little wander around with the underwater camera, poked it into some snags where I could see a bit of movement, and uh, a couple of chunks came into view. Um, the one that came closest to the camera we identified a bit later on as uh, a fish called Shoulders. You know, he's identified because he's got that uh, little nick out the top of his tail. That's a known 50 pound, I think it's done 51, 52 in the past. And then slowly drifted into view, there was two fish behind it that were absolutely colossal and just dwarfed it. You know, I could just make out the shadows from where I was. And they were so much bigger, they must have been, they must have been the big girls. 
Um, I can only guess how big they were or what fish they were. You know, I'm not that up on the uh, gigantic fish yet, but they, they must have been upper 60s, 70s, or maybe even upper 70s. They were huge fish. Um, fortunately, they weren't in my swim. It was uh, just up from my brother. Um, but nonetheless, it was it was very nice to see it. Um, I was hoping for a bite last night. You know, I thought things might kick off. There was one hell of a thunderstorm late on, and I thought that might just spark a bit of life into into the place. You know, drop the temperature a little bit, but it, it wasn't to be. You know, if anything, it, it upped the temperature. You know, you could physically feel the humidity rise as the thunderstorm got closer and closer to you. But uh, never mind. So uh, yeah, I did get a bite. But unfortunately, it was a tench. So uh, no more fish to add. Um, so I'm going to end up an eight fish um, for the week, which I'm not complaining at at all. You know, that's, that's not a bad week's fishing for Danny, as far as I understand. And my brother ended up with seven. So, uh, all in all, we've had a fantastic week's fishing down here on Gigantica.